Welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar on the Emotionally Intelligent Leader. Uh, we're very happy for you to join us today. Just a few housekeeping items as we get started. Uh, there is a chat and a question and answer function that you should be able to see at the bottom of your screen. Um, we would ask that you try to hold your questions to the end of the presentation. There will be time for that. Um, and we will keep an eye on both the chat and the Q&A to field those questions. Uh, and one note that this session is recorded. So after this session in the next few days, we will We'll send everyone who's attended today a link to the recording and any other items that might be requested during the session. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce our wonderful facilitator today. So Jennifer Askey, uh, she works with leaders and leaders to be in a very down to earth and engaging approach that utilizes emotional intelligence, positive psychology and mindfulness to help her clients navigate the internal and external obstacles of their professional worlds. Jennifer brings over 20 years of working in complex academic organizations as both a faculty member and administrator to her coaching work, where she focuses on career planning and transition, as well as organizational effectiveness. She utilizes assessments such as DISC, EQI 2.0, Belbin Team Roles, and the 360s to help her clients and their organizations gain new insights and develop forward-looking plans for change. She's an engaging and enthusiastic public speaker and workshop facilitator. She leads workshops on emotional intelligence and team effectiveness in Alberta virtually and virtually to a broader audience. Uh, Jennifer holds a PhD in German literature. She's a certified professional co-active coach with CTI and a professional certified coach through ICF. She's pursuing certification with positive intelligence and the International Mindfulness Teachers Association. Locally, Jennifer serves on the board of the Edmonton chapter of the International Coach Federation and the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. With that, I'll pass it off to Dr. Jennifer Askey. Thank you so much, Sydney. And thank you everybody for being here. I'm just delighted to have this opportunity to talk to you about the course I'm going to be teaching in March, Emotionally Intelligent Leadership. And if you look at this opening slide that I'm sharing, it says bridging the gap between subject matter expert and leader. And, um, and that's, that's what we're sort of here to talk about, that we emotional intelligence is, is a leadership quality. And it's not so much what we know about accounting or German literature or anything else, but it's how we lead people. So emotional intelligence is, is knowing people, knowing yourself and knowing others. Um, I also have a short introductory slide that has my email on jennifer at jenniferaskey.com. Um, you can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn as well. Um, tells you what I like. I like coaching. I like personal effectiveness research, and I like my dogs. Um, and I believe that who we are is how we lead. And that's what really brings me to EQ work, EQ as a shorthand for emotional intelligence sometimes also called EI. Take your pick, both are okay. So I'm taking 45 minutes or so of your lunch hour. This is what you're going to get back from me. Um, the purpose of the webinar is to introduce you to the four pillars of emotional intelligence. Um, and we're gonna talk, I'll provide examples of EQ in action and in inaction and give you guys opportunities in the chat to, to chime in with what you see and what you recognize. Um, and in the course, we'll do more of that. We'll do more case studies. We'll bring more of your knowledge in and have you work through your own case studies as well as things that I find in the literature. And in the course, you'll have the opportunity to informally and formally assess your EQ and develop a plan for growing or maybe even better accessing your innate EQ. Um, so I, as Sydney mentioned in the introduction, I am certified in an emotional intelligence assessment instrument. I'm actually certified in two, um, but there, there's a cost associated with that. And for purposes of this online continuing ed course and making it accessible, what we're using for this, um, for this online course is um, some informal assessments that I'm gonna share with you at the end of the webinar that you can go <clears throat> that you can go do online. We'll also use the reports and the information that you get from that in our course. So we're gonna ground this in some of the research and we're gonna use our, our things in the course to sort of talk about our own EQ 
interactive skills. So it's going to be very interactive and hands-on, and I'm going to try to give you a taste of that today in the webinar. So let's start. What is EQ? What is emotional intelligence? <clears throat> so in the chat, I want you to tell me with a simple yes or no, um, how you, whether you see these qualities playing a huge role in developing your leadership skills or in the leadership skills of other people around you. So EQ is perceiving emotions. Are you aware of your emotional landscape, your emotional weather pattern? Can you access and generate your emotions to assist thought, right? Emotions are data. So as we're building thought models and as we're building plans and thinking through things, emotions are data for that. Do you have access to your emotions in that way and can use them? Do you understand emotions and emotional knowledge, right? Do you work with them? Do you think with them? Do you understand them in yourself and with other people? Um, because working with emotions is part of leading people and leading yourself. And then reflectively regulating emotions to provide, to promote, excuse me, to promote emotional and intellectual growth. Reflectively regulate emotions. Um, and in the chat, somebody said, gosh, do you, can you regulate emotions or can you just regulate your response to emotions? And I love that question because the we think maybe in first instance of regulating our response, right? Let's say we're experiencing the emotion, uh, the emotion of sadness and we're in a professional setting and we don't want to instantaneously burst into uncontrollable tears because it wouldn't feel right where we were at. So we want to regulate that response right? or we are experiencing the emotion of anger and we don't want to scream <laughs> or lash out again because it's inappropriate and so we think of regulating our response the interesting thing about getting into emotional intelligence work and developing your emotional intelligence is that slowly but surely as you recognize your own emotional landscape and experience okay what sends me down this emotional path or that you can actually get to the point where you can make choices, right? You're, you get out of a re reflexive, responsive, sort of knee-jerk reaction to your emotions and into a, oh, okay, that's making me upset, but I also know this is data. So what am I gonna do with this creatively? How am I going to intentionally respond to this? So it's, it's both managing the response so you're not entirely reactive, but it is also learning how to manage that emotion, right, as you get to know yourself better. So in the chat, again, tell me with a simple yes or no if you can see how these qualities play a big role in developing leadership capacity. And so I can see in the chat tons of people saying yes, and I'm so happy that you guys are here and contributing. Like, I want to know what you're interested in and how this is landing with you. So this is super valuable. I really appreciate it. So you can also see in this, um, in the picture that accompanies this slide, um, the four pillars of emotional intelligence, self-recognition, self-management, social recognition, and social management. And I think I'm presenting them in slightly different order today, but looking at the, um, the bullet points, those four bullet points and those four areas, you can see how they're all interrelated, right? We understand emotions and access them in our own lives and in dealing with other people. Okay, moving on. Why does EQ matter? Now, here is some of the research. There's a great deal of research on emotional intelligence out there. Um, one of the authors that has popularized research on emotional intelligence in North America is Daniel Goman. He has a whole bevy of resources, some of which we will be looking at in the course. Um, but this comes from all sorts of research sources. A study at UC Berkeley looking at PhDs over four decades, so people who'd attend, attained a PhD, so highly, highly achieved, highly achieved is not the right word, highly accomplished in their subject matter area. EQ, so they assessed these people's EQ, EQ was four times more powerful as a predictor of success in their field 
than their IQ was. So assess EQ, assess IQ, here's a PhD chemist. The PhD chemist with a high IQ has a better chance of succeeding than the PhD chemist with a low IQ, lo lower EQ, even if they have the same IQ, right? This is your ability to deal with people, your ability to navigate workspaces, your ability to navigate your internal landscape. Those things matter for our career success, even more than our innate smarts or our innate subject matter expertise. <clears throat> Research in EQ has, shows that in the last 20 years or so, EQ scores among young people and adults have fallen while IQ scores have jumped. I just think that's an interesting statistic because it maybe shows what we emphasize when we test school-age children, university students, young people, right? We want everybody to be in STEM and everybody to test well. Um, and so maybe we're teaching so that people perform really well on tests. And IQ tests are, are biased towards certain kinds of test-taking strategies. And because we've given a lot of emphasis to those kinds of tests, scores in those areas have gone up, and yet scores in our interpersonal relationships and our internal and external emotional management have gone down. So there's a big gap there between what we need and what we're developing in people. And what we need, you can see in that bottom, the bottom row of the slide, which is in a worldwide study of companies looking to hire new people, the most desired attributes, 67% of the most desired attributes in new hirees were EQ competencies. 33% of the things they needed from new hires were other competencies. So that's your subject matter expertise, right? If we're hiring bench chemists, we need you to know chemistry. But what you know, your subject matter expertise, that's going to change. I'm going to hire you into a role, maybe as a new, uh, in an entry level position. And you're going to learn new things and build and grow and become part of the systems that we have and learn the knowledge that pertains to your job in this particular context. Your EQ, how you manage yourself and how you manage your relationships with other people, you need that no matter what job you're in, right? So those are, sometimes they're called soft skills, but this is even more than soft skills, I think. Um, I think stats like this, this, this isn't a soft skill, this is actually an essential skill. So EQ is super, super important. All righty. So we're going to start with the first pillar of EQ, which is self-recognition or self-awareness. So here we have, can I recognize my own internal weather systems, right? Do I understand the connection of cause and effect in my emotional life? Maybe that's a fancy way of saying, do I know what triggers me? Do I know what my default responses are? Do I know where I go when I'm frustrated? Do I know where I go when I'm sad emotionally, right? Um, Self-appreciation, acceptance, and confidence. This doesn't mean like, ooh, good self-esteem. It means, do I know where I am strong, what I'm really good at? Do I appreciate the unique gifts that I have in the world? And do I walk into relationships with other people knowing about myself? what I bring to the table, right? So it's, it is an emotional inner knowing, but it's also sort of the whole picture of inner knowing. Underneath the circle diagram, you see that self-recognition reflects intra-personal communication. So this is how are you getting on with yourself? Um, one thing that might be interesting to look at in the self-recognition quadrant of EQ is something like self-talk. How aware are you of um, you know, your inner critic, what your inner critic voices said, say to you, how aware you are of sort of your inner best self and where that's that one example of self-awareness in an EQ framework. Um, consciousness and assertiveness, again, not assertiveness for the sake of assertiveness, but assertiveness coming from being very grounded in yourself and knowing yourself and emotional identification, which is being able to identify emotions. So that means, um, can you recognize emotions beyond mad, sad, glad, right? Those are basics, but we know there are lots more. And can, so can you parse those sorts of things? Um, do you know how overwhelmed or stress shows up in your life? 
we know that culturally, overwhelm and stress, may, men are acculturated to default to anger. Women are acculturated to default to sadness. Does that hold true for you? Do you have another pattern? Are you aware of it? Um, other examples of, of self-recognition are, am I aware of the value that I bring to my work? Do I know how to articulate it? Do I know my own values as a human being? And is my work connected to those, right? Can I articulate all of that? And can I advocate for myself from where I stand, okay? So thinking about a case study here, let's say that you are working in an organization and you wanna ask for a raise, or after we have vaccine, widespread vaccination and we can go back into working in offices rather than from our kids' rooms like I am right now, um, let's say you wanna ask for a permanent work from home situation. So let's think about approaching that as an exercise in using your emotional intelligence. One step would be identify what's at stake for you in either asking for a raise or permanent work from home. What of your internal values are you honoring by asking for this raise? Why is it important for you? Okay. And that's important. That's, that's, that's that grounding in yourself. Okay. The next step, identify your emotions in the moment. Recognize when your emotions are gonna help you approach your boss or somebody else about this and when your emotions might be getting in the way, right? So if you're incredibly overwrought by this or you're super stressed and you're thinking about crying, right? Can you manage your emotions such that you approach this not from a fear perspective, but from a grounded in your self-worth, right? That assertiveness that comes from confidence in your self-worth and then can you outline your contributions? Can you convey them to your boss? Outline how you want to grow and how you want the team or the company to benefit, right? So at the beginning, you, you think, okay, I want a permanent work from home situation because, right? Does it have to do with time? And you can be more efficient if you don't have to commute an hour and a half. Does it have to do with childcare arrangements and penalties for picking kids up after five and, you can't do that if you have to commute, or is it a different kind of accommodation? But what are you honoring in yourself? And then how would working from home or giving a raise honor the team's goals, the company's goals, the values that they've articulated? All of those things are exercises in EQ and they all begin with this self-recognition, okay? So that's pillar number one, and you know, go ahead and and nod at me in the in the chat if you if this is making sense to you. <clears throat> the next pillar is social recognition. So this is awareness and consideration of the feelings and responses of other people. Um, now, if you if we have empathy, we have service and compassion and benevolence, holistic communication situational perceptual awareness, which is a great topic, and interpersonal development, right? What I want to zone in on in this long list of attributes is empathy. Just for purposes of the webinar and for purposes of illustrating the importance of this. So we've been in pandemic for 11 months, right? It's like March 487th today or something. And we cannot underestimate the stress that this has put on people and institutions, right? So if you're looking at leadership, either self-leadership, right? Taking a leadership role in your own career, having a bigger impact, growing the possibilities for yourself, demonstrating that you have a vision for yourself, or looking at leadership in terms of leadership within an organization, empathy is a great place to start. Because if let's say you're working in an organization as a team lead or a unit director, you're not leading initiatives and projects. You're leading people. Work doesn't get done. People do work, right? So thinking of the people you work with as complex human beings who are each experiencing their personal work lives, emotional lives, community lives, family lives, domestic arrangements differently, 
being aware of that and approaching that with empathy is a huge step in making you a great leader. So in the chat, tell me if you're seeing empathy in your environment right now, whether you're seeing it personally or in your family relationships, at work, in our community, right? Where are we noticing that? And how often are you seeing it? I hear a lot of people talking about empathy more. Are you seeing it more? Are you witnessing it more? Do you see more of a need for it? Yeah, see everybody saying there always could be more, but yes, more people are paying attention to this or, oh, I wish I saw this more, right? So empathy is a critical leadership component. And I'll, I'll tell you a little case study about this. So right now, the University of Alberta, one of the largest employers in the city, is undergoing an enormous administrative restructuring. Um, major budget cuts from the province are going to result over a not too terribly long period of time, less than three years, a thousand person job loss. So I've been coaching privately somebody who leads a team of people um, at the U of A who are in different unions and have different job protections and different job classifications. And in our coaching session, we've been talking a lot about what she values, what is sort of in, in front of her mind when she's leading people, what's important to her about the work she does and about the people who do the work, right? what's important to her about the team and the university. We've talked a lot about this. And one of the things that we've discussed is that recognizing that your own fear your fear of not doing enough, not measuring up, falling behind, your imposter syndrome, if that shows up sometimes, that fear actually fuels the fear in others, right? If, however, instead of operating from fear, we operate from empathy, right? So not arrogance, not cynicism. We operate from a place of empathy and understanding and do what we can to st and, and still have our physical and emotional health in place and support the people we're working with to still have their physical and emotional health in place as we, like, as we have huge job restructuring. Then we can keep moving forward instead of getting stuck, getting mired, being miserable. And so this supervisor got two emails at the end of December from staff thanking her for her calm and empathetic leadership. And the supervisor can't fix anything, can't change anything, doesn't even have secret information to pass along. It's just, I see you. I'm frustrated. You're frustrated. I'm tired. You're tired. What can we do to support one another and move forward? Do you need to take some extra time? I'm working from home going for you. Do you have the supports you need? That's empathy in leadership. And we know from research that empathy and leadership actually leads to loyalty on the part of the people who work with you, increased employee engagement, right? This is an investment in the long haul when people see, feel seen and heard. And at the end of the day, that's what everybody wants is to feel seen and heard. Really? Like at the end of the day, that's where we're all at. So as a pillar of emotional intelligence, social recognition invites us to see and hear people where they're at. Just thinking about empathy in our current context, and I'm, I'm sort of watching the chat trickle in and trying not to get too distracted by that, but recognizing um, the role that leaders have in modeling empathy and in using, using that right now in this moment in our social interactions, in part because so many people aren't in a position to do that, right? Um, so social recognition, going to keep trucking along to self-management. Now, you will notice that these elements of EQ are all interconnected. Like you can't just talk about one without it filtering into the others, right? So <clears throat> here in this particular slide around self-management, I'm going to talk about goals. It's just one of the elements, but it's there. The other elements are self-control, discipline, um, integrity and trustworthiness. This is a huge, huge uh, topic in, in growing EQ is how you demonstrate integrity, how you demonstrate trustworthiness, how you build trust. Like that, it's a huge topic that I'm really looking forward to doing some reading and discussing and planning around in the course because 
teams and organizations with high trust function so much better and get so much more done than in low trust environments. And having high EQ helps build those trust environments. This is where we get into your own motivation um, and your flexibility and adaptability, right? Like, oh my goodness, how much of that have we needed lately? So talking about goals, that's just what I'm gonna narrow in on in this self-management slide is, um, one of the key metrics of productive teams is shared purpose, okay? So the team shares a vision of what their purpose is, the work they're doing and why it's important. And so that's one set of goals. The team wants to get from point A to point B on a project, on a deliverable, on an initiative, on whatever it is that they're doing, right? Individually, self-management, do you, have you articulated your own goals and then see how they mesh with and overlap with the goal of your organization, your team, whatever, right? So super high functioning teams and organizations have, let's say, a strategic vision that everybody sees how they fit into, both as contributors in the work environment and as people, right? So are you keyed into, dialed into your goals professionally and personally and see how they are connected, right? Um, and if you've done that, right, if you have your goals, your ambitions, and you know how your job in the moment is contributing to you realizing those goals and ambitions, um, how are you motivating yourself? What are, what are your motivations? And on the flip side, what are your, what are your gremlins, what's going to get in your way, right? So here's another chat opportunity. Um, let me know if you have a clear sense of how reaching your work goals overlap with reaching your personal goals. Are you doing it or do you need to do it? Let me know. This is a tough one, I think. Like I have goals, my job has goals, do they overlap and it, how much? Okay, need to do it better. Okay, do, are they the same? Oh, great. Oh, goody, goody. So this is excellent for me to see. Those of you who come to the class next month, we can, mm, we can really dig into this and create exercises around this that, that define the between the two and the alignment between the two because we're more than our jobs all of us are more than our jobs and you know it's maybe a little bit utopian to think that everybody gets to have a job that allows them to unfold to their fullest human potential but thinking of your work as part of developing your full potential is really empowering right and it it, it shifts your mindset towards your work. And then your energy going into social situations is, is different. Uh, yeah, they do overlap. You want them to overlap because then, mm, because then you're, you're really keyed into the meaning of your work. And we all want work that's meaningful. We all want work that is meaningful. And so thinking about how goals feed in that um, is, is a really important exercise in growing your EQ. I so appreciate you guys chiming in in the chat. Like this is, this is really good stuff, both for you all to surface in the context of the webinar and for me to glance at, like did we make sure that we save this for me in terms of course planning because this sort of shows me where we can spend more time. Okay, social management. This is where you might most, most easily recognize EQ, right? This is the pillar of the framework that I think is the easiest for us to see, which is social management or relationship management. Working with others to achieve goals, um, building strong relationships, having influence, right? But you can also see how you cannot excel at social management without having done the self-recognition 
the social recognition and the self-management, right? You need all of, you need all three of them. You can't just take one component of EQ and say, well, you know, I'll focus on social management because that's what gets seen. Well, you got it. That's the tip of the iceberg, right? You got to do all the work behind the scenes as well. So um, I think what is interesting here or what I would focus on, zero in on for the purpose of the webinar here is the notion of influence. Because influence um, as a word can have a positive connotation or a negative connotation. Um, we know that sometimes people use the influence that society has given them for ill as opposed to for good. But in an EQ sense, influence is like tapping into the, the in, innate motivation that other people have, creating that vision, getting them on board, leading people towards good things, right? That's the kind of influence that we talk about when we talk about EQ. So think for a second about the people you work with and yourself who have real influence for good and get real work done. Do you you see them employing some of these elements of EQ that have come across the slideshow. Do you see them employing that in their work? Right? Can you see how, for example, empathy shows up, how motivation, motivation shows up, how clear communication shows up, how their perception of the emotional landscape of a room or of a team plays into their ability to have influence? So this is, this is kind of the juice where we're headed towards, but you have to do some of the other work first. And I hope that the webinar has kind of shown you in these four pillars that are interconnected, that work on one makes working on the next one easier and the next one easier and the next one easier, right? That we are, um, that we all have emotional intelligence. We are sometimes not invited to access it. And so for me, this continuing education course presents an opportunity for people to recognize, access, build, grow, recognize and see in the world their innate emotional intelligence so that you can take that into the world and grow your influence, right? Grow your impact, grow your satisfaction, right? Oh, I feel like I've just like given you a fire hose. So you have homework. Your first homework is register for the course. SUPR 0862, Emotionally Intelligent Leadership through the School of Continuing Education at McEwen. And take a free assessment to gauge your EQ. Um, now, there was a question at the beginning, like how does this get measured? I am certified in two different uh, quantitative and qualitative instruments that measure EQ. So there are commercial products out there. Um, Psychology Today and the Institute for Health and Human Potential each offer free assessments um, that give you a great sort of benchmark of these EQ competencies in action in your life. And, and because these are free, we're going to use these in the class as sort of your own roadmap. Like we'll do things in, in the course in terms of learning and reading and discussing, but your own action can be based on what you've recognized around your own EQ and what is more, most important to you now and using that assessment to sort of grow your own learning plan that the course can help you with. Um, so both of those are great. You can do both of them. The third one on there is, is at positiveintelligence.com. Um, and there are two assessments they offer. And one is called the saboteur assessment. It is, oh, did you hear the hound ears flapping? I told Sydney we would get some hound ear flapping and right on time. Um, this, the saboteur assessment offered at positiveintelligence.com is it correlates highly to EQ. This is that business around self-awareness and self-management of where you get in your own way. Okay, and part of EQ, self-awareness and self-management, learning 
what your negative self-talk tendencies are, how you might sabotage yourself um, when you're not when you're not accessing your EQ. So that's just another little bonus thing. Um, the assessment is super, super, super interesting. Um, so that's your homework. Oops, and then I did it twice. Looking forward to the class. So the class is um, in March, first two weeks of March. It will involve theory. So we'll do some reading and practice. And I hope you've gotten a sense from the webinar that I'm really into practice. Like the theory of EQ is fun and I can kind of geek out around it, but it only matters when you're putting it into practice, right? So we're gonna create small groups. We're gonna create opportunities for people to learn and grow. We're gonna create a safe space where people can be a little bit vulnerable and really put this in to action. Bring along coworkers, right? Bring along people who you think want this work and need this work. Um, I'm gonna field some questions now too, but the, again, I'm not, the webinar is an opportunity for me to introduce the course is not gonna be me lecturing at you, right? There will be questions. And my introduction slide where I said, I believe that who you are is how you lead. That's where I wanna leave my presentation today, which is practicing your EQ skills levels up your leadership game, right? So get into the habit of making note of the emotions you experience during a day. And I put work day, but, but during the day, like what emotions are you experiencing? Are you overwhelmed? Are you super happy? Are you excited about something? Um, oh, Colette, that, I'll take your first question there. The course focused on coworkers. Is there a course on mentoring for parents and their teenagers? You know, because continuing education is sort of the frame for this, I, I'm, I developed the webinar sort of thinking about that kind of leadership. Um, this applies to parents and their teenagers. I think this totally applies to parents and their teenagers. Um, and if people are interested in that slant on it, you know, add that to the chat. Um, or put it in the Q and A. Like that's that's great for me to know because these are personal skills that we need to use at home and at work. Um, I think of it in in terms of leadership. When I think about emotionally intelligent leadership, I think that we all have to start with leading ourselves. And if who you are is how you lead, who you are is how you parent, who you are is how you partner. Right? These things don't exist completely compartmentalized. Um, if there's interest in thinking about how this plays out interpersonally outside of work, I can go back to my course and do a little massaging and bring in a few readings and, and create that larger context because, um, because it's not compartmentalized. Like we don't say this is the way we are at work and we're completely different at home with our kids. Like that's not how we want to show up in the world. Um, so I'm going to go to my last slide, which basically says, ask me questions. Um, I have given you my Twitter handle here, as well as my email. Feel free to contact me either way. I'm also on LinkedIn, so have at it. Um, please get in touch with me. I, I think that this, um, this kind of work is so important. Um, and the fact that so many people showed up to the webinar kind of warms my heart and I want this to be of use to people in a practical sort of way. So that is my goal for the class, um, but I'm totally willing to answer questions now. I see two in the Q&A. We're trying to, I think, steer people towards the chat so we can limit the number of windows we have open. Um, um, yeah, I can help out with the Q and A. Um, so the first question is from Tracy. Uh, it was actually early on in the presentation, she asked, "You talk about reflectively regulating our emotions here, but is it really our emotions we're regulating, or our behavior that come from those emotions?" Ah, that is a good question, Tracy. Um, I'm typing my email because evidently my screen doesn't show at all. Um, so. We, 
we're aiming to regulate the behavior first, I think, right? Like that's the inroad to it, but you actually can regulate your emotions, right? There are practices where, whether it's mindfulness, mindful awareness, meditation, breathing, journaling, other sorts of things where you bring those emotions up to the surface, kind of look at them and then decide what to do about them. The emotions are data. And so in the regulation of emotion, it's can I, can I teach myself through examining what's going on to be less reactive to my, to my own inner emotions or to other people's emotions? And can I train myself to be more intentional and creative with how I respond to emotional data? But whether you're journaling or meditating or reflecting in another way, it's bringing it up, looking at it, recognizing it, and then making choices around it. Um, so it's both and, um, to answer your question. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, what are your favorite resources, books, articles, podcasts that you'd recommend for someone who really wants to level up their leadership? I sense that you closely follow Brene Brown's work. You know, um, I do actually follow Brene Brown's work. Um, I'm not a Dare to Lead facilitator. I've been through that program. It's really good. Um, her podcast just last month moved to Spotify only. It's called Unlocking Us. She has great conversations with people. I also regularly listen to, and this is also a bit of an answer to what I see in the chat from Thomas around being more of a cerebral and intellectual processor and less of a heart person. Um, I can recommend the Neuro Leadership Institute, NLI, Neuro Leadership Institute. They have a podcast called Your Brain at Work. They also offer webinars and trainings, um, brain-based coaching skills. They teach courses. Um, but what they're very good at, and the positive intelligence free assessment that I pointed you towards in the last slide is also built on this research that shows that um, this is neuroscience, neurons that fire together, wire together. So recognizing our own neural plasticity to develop a growth mindset, to develop our flexibility and adaptability, and, and to look at the research that shows that people who can access emotional data and use it are more successful. Like emotions are data. They, they don't, you cannot block them out of your life. You might be squashing them, you might be ignoring them, you might be in an environment that doesn't invite them in, but they are data that your body is processing constantly. So looking at the research around what happens emotionally in your brain when you're triggered by things, when you encounter things, and then learning to work through that. There's a lot of neuroscience research out there, and the NLI podcast, Your Brain at Work, does a really good job of um, breaking that down into, you know, 20 to 30 minute chunks of really interesting learning, all research-based, all very scientifically grounded. Can you repeat the name of that podcast? Your Brain at Work. Thank you. Um, a question from Lori, do true colors or the color spe spectrum tie into this topic? I know zero about true colors. I know some people who've done that work and I've never done it myself, so I don't know. I think that um, most of the things that I work with, whether you're looking at DISC or Belden team roles or positive intelligence or EQ, there's always overlap. So I would be shocked if there were not overlap because you're looking at like, how are you wired? How do you show up? Are you showing up the way you want to? Where are the gaps? How do you bridge that gap? Like all of these systems are, um, or all of these frameworks are just really good opportunities for us to have conversations with ourselves about how we want to grow. Thank you. Um, a question in the Q&A, and I won't read the name just in case. How could you possibly deal with leaders who aren't emotionally intelligent or who are rather harsh and to some extent a tyrant? Yeah, first of all, my heart. Um, second of all, been there, done that. Um, sometimes situations are toxic and there's no fixing them. 
one of the things though is to when you're developing your own self-awareness in conjunction with developing social awareness recognizing patterns around okay so and so isn't accessing their EQ, might know it if it bit them on the hind parts if i let that critical judgmental non-emotionally intelligent attitude infect me then every then we're spiraling down into the river of misery right so learning how to recognize okay this is what i'm getting from my environment <sighs> all right what do i know about my own values what do i recognize in myself what do i do when i'm feeling disparaged by this person overwhelmed by this person shouted down by this person what can i do that doesn't invite more of that but that offers an alternative to that sort of a bit of emotionally managing up this is another neuroscience trick where we learn about mirror neurons where people tend to kind of gravitate towards the most positive element in the room unless it's the leader who is negative and a leader who just emits toxic behavior will drag a team down uh, it is work to be to report to somebody like that and have to push the emotional intelligence ball uphill. Um, it is easier work when you have people on board do it with you. It is easier work when you have domestic supports that help that, right? But recognizing that toxicity or the lack of emotional intelligence is contagious, but so is positivity. Positivity can be contagious. Emotional intelligence can be contagious. Surfacing it and talking about it like, oh, this was successful. And these are the steps I took to make that successful. And then getting the ball rolling that way. But that is a really hard um, situation. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say there's magic solutions. The best thing I did in this situation with the tyrant for a boss was to leave. Unfortunately, that is frequently the best solution. Unfortunately, it's also not always an available solution. But yeah, thinking about how to create an emotional environment that can be contagious around you and help you push that ball uphill. Yep. Um, other questions coming in, Sydney? Nothing in the Q&A. So if anyone has anything else, yeah. uh, I think now sort of the last chance. If there is nothing else, I uh, just want to thank Jennifer for your time and this wonderful presentation. I think lot made us all think and definitely some work to do for all of us there is one more question here um oh, yeah. and from just sarah. yeah from sarah before we go to that i just will note too that we will be sending an email with a direct link to the course our website is not the best i apologize for that we're apparently there's a new one coming but we'll make sure you have a direct link so you can find that easily um, and now we'll go to sarah's question yeah transformational leadership theory does require high emotional intelligence all of the frameworks around change management also require high emotional intelligence. One of the things that you need to do in transformational leadership change management is get people on board, get people to recognize the urgency of the change, right? So this is motivation, this is social recognition, this is your ability to communicate holistically, your ability to read the room and respond in a way that's gonna link in with what people need. So many direct applications. Um, a good book on the topic, you can look for Daniel Goleman's, um, I'll, I'll type his name in the chat. So Daniel Goleman, um, he has several things, including like an anthology of his best of, it's a really great read. Um, I recommend that very, very highly. Anything by Brene Brown, she doesn't really talk about EQ, but this informs all of her work. Um, I mean, I have lots of them. There's also a book called Positive Intelligence that the framework um, for the saboteur assessment is based on. He talks about um, emotional and mental fitness, right? So this is also resiliency. So if you've done resilience at work or if, you're, if your workplace or your domestic life is thinking about how to be resilient, EQ is part of resiliency, right? Knowing yourself, knowing your values being able to read those in other people, being able to engage on that level with yourself and with others. And there's one question just came into the Q&A. How, uh, how can you be emotionally intelligent when working with a team that won't listen to you and as a consequence, won't follow? 
if you are the leader, then, well, you have some work to do because if they're not listening to you and questioning your authority, then emotional intelligence is one of the issues that you, that you can build. But it looks like starting with trust and buy-in and engagement is another place to, to start and thinking about, okay, what am I recognizing that's happening emotionally for them? How am I responding to that myself, right? Because that's an exhausting position to be in. So regulating your own emotions and then thinking, okay, how are we going to go build trust? What does trustworthiness look like? How do I extend trust? How do I build trust? How do I get people to extend it to me? Research shows actually that the way to get people to trust you is to actually trust them first. Kind of a risky thing in some people's minds, right? Because you could wind up disappointed. You could wind up having that trust not be deserved but the quickest way to earn trust is to give it so thinking about boundaries thinking about how to how to create that environment those are also eq exercises um dr jay gottman yes his work on eq is also good i mean i have i have a variety of books not all of them are great reading i will say um but yeah the gottman book is good and um, if you have access to Forbes or the Harvard Business Review, they have gazillions of articles on emotional intelligence and how it benefits individuals, how it benefits individual contributors, leaders, companies, um, mental health, like all of those things. There's a great deal of research on it um, and a great deal of opinion on it. And it doesn't always, I mean, I work in higher education and, um, I sometimes feel like, really? We've been talking about this for 20 years. Why isn't it just commonplace for everybody? But that evidently doesn't always trickle down. So yeah, talking about it, surfacing it, making it a topic of discussion. Thank you. I think uh, with that, we should probably wrap up. There's no more questions that I see in the Q&A. So thanks again, Jennifer. Um, we will be sending some stuff out. There is one more question in the chat about the two journals that you just mentioned. Um, but with that, uh, thanks again. And Jennifer, I'll leave it to you to wrap up. Okay, so I do think that Sydney and I had a recording problem for those first two slides. So the recording that you will have access to will be missed something. Sydney and I can talk afterwards about maybe re-recording a bit or, or at least making sure you have access to the slides. Um, thank you all for coming and being um, available to participate and contribute. Somebody wants a book title and I'm feeling very on the spot. Um, <laughs> email me for that. <laughs> Whoever wants that book title, send me an email and I will get back to you because um, I would have to I'm not always good with names and titles. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate this a great deal. This was a great opportunity. I hope you got something out of it. I hope to see a lot of you in the course. Um, yeah, I think that's it now, Sydney. Thank you very much for hosting it. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, everyone.